of the NBA. Charles Barkley said his relationship with Michael Jordan went south when Sir Charles criticized the job his former Dream Team teammate has done running the then Charlotte Bobcats. Barkley has maintained that he was only doing his job saying, that part of my job sucks, but I have to criticize people I like or are friends. Now, Barkley's broadcast partner, Kenny Smith, he's got a different take on this, telling TMZ Charles needs to apologize. I think the one thing that uh, Charles and both Michael have is a lot of pride. A lot of pride. A lot of pride. So once the pride settles down. So you, you think eventually they'll be on good terms again? I think they'll be cut, but I do think Charles was wrong. You think Charles was wrong in yeah, that he, one? Mike's doing a great job. And you know, so he so he should really, do you think Charles should apologize and all yeah, that? Yeah, he should apologize. You know, he didn't have to, it, 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 it should apologize. He's doing a great job. TMZ, they are everywhere. Will Kane in the house. So good to see you. Glad to be here. I'm going to start with Max here on this one. Max, do you think Barkley owes Jordan an apology? No. And yes. And let me start by saying that Kenny Smith, when he says Barkley is wrong, is not talking about in the wrong. He disagrees. Let's be clear about this. He disagrees with Barkley's analysis about Jordan, the owner. I agree with Barkley and disagree with Kenny there. Now, no, he doesn't owe him a public apology because professional ethics demand that he tell the truth. The media is the fourth estate. And, and the, the job there is to keep our institutions honest from independent, you know, oversight of them. And that goes for politics and that goes even for sports, sure. Um, and, and Barkley was telling the truth as he saw it about Michael Jordan. So professionally, publicly, he does not owe Jordan an apology. And that's really what we're talking about. However, privately, if that's your friend, yeah, you might want to pick up the phone and say, look, man, I'm sorry. You know, maybe we should have talked first, but this topic came up and, and that's the way I feel about it. But I'm sorry, as your friend, if you felt embarrassed by it or there was some kind of breach of loyalty, I just have this, this professional responsibility. I think a private apology, if that's how Barkley genuinely feels about betraying his friend in that way, is okay. And for those who would say, well, if you're doing your job, how can you be sorry about it? Because you have divided loyalties. One, you have a professional responsibility, and the other, you have a responsibility to your friend and that friendship. And, and in this case, maybe the professional one overrides the personal one, but that doesn't mean that the personal one is insignificant and that feelings are not hurt and, and that, that privately you can have a separate right. conversation. Max, how, how, how do those apologies go over with your wife? Those kind of apologies. You know, I'm sorry if it hurts your feelings type, type apologies. I'm not really sorry for what I said, but I'm sorry if that hurts your feelings. That I don't know what you're talking about. I've never yeah, had it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what kind of apology you want Barkley well to give. Well played, huh? right. Max Kellerman. Yeah, well yeah. played. Here's, uh, basically, except for that half-hearted apology you suggested Barkley make, I agree with you totally, Max. I, there, I'm going to do a Stephen A. Smith thing here. I'm going to look in the camera and say, if Charles Barkley apologizes to Michael Jordan, no, hell no, he should not do that. And if you do, I will lose respect for him. I would lose respect for Barkley. As Max just pointed out, that's his job. His job is to tell the truth. There's this mindset among, I don't know, I guess sports media critics and maybe social media that this industry is plagued with hot takes. It most certainly is not. And most people that think that can't tell the difference between a hot take and simply being right. They can't tell them between confidence and seeking attention. Most of them are just insecure little people uh, unsatisfied with their place in the world, so they want to go with someone else. No, hot takes aren't our problem. You know what our problem is? People that don't tell the truth. And Max, you hinted at this, and it's exactly true in politics as well. It's people with compromised values. They get up, and they have another thing playing in their heads besides telling the truth. In politics, it's because you worked for a certain... A political party or a campaign. It's guised as experience, by the way. We put these people on TV because they have experience, not necessarily because their ideas are unique or, or free from burden, but what we really have is we need people who don't worry about those things, don't worry about their old friends, don't worry about... Don't worry about their connections, ulterior motives. We need people who are willing to get up there and say something unpopular. And Charles Barkley was willing to do that even at the expense of a buddy. That's what his job was to do, and it, in fact, shows integrity. I have to put myself on Front Street here and just let you both know what time it is in this regard. Let me first say, Kenny Smith and I are friends. We go back many, many years. He's absolutely right. Charles Barkley and I are friends. And Shaq and I are like brothers. I'm very, very tight with everybody. 
and I know MJ. And I'm not going to go into who I've spoken to, but y'all can imagine who I've spoken to when I drop the details that I'm about to drop to you. Lockout shortened season 2011-2012. The Charlotte Bobcats are 7-59. and The following year, they're 21 and 61, right? Because it's a lockout shortened season. That's why they were 7 and 59 the first go round. They were god awful. There were decisions that Barkley felt he had to speak on that MJ may have made, whether it was the drafting of Michael Gill, you know, Kid Gilcrest, or, you know, Gerald Henderson with Bismarck Biombo and these boys being on the team, et cetera, et cetera. I know Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan is a big boy. Michael Jordan can take somebody being critical of him. He requires two things. Number one, that you know what you're talking about when you give details. And number two, if y'all are tight, pick up the phone and call me first. You have access to me. You have inside information. One of the things that I did, if you remember, I went off about Carmelo Anthony in the Olympics. And I said, I want to hear anything about Olympic gold medal. I want to chip because of the reports that were out there. I had to come on the air, Will, and apologize. You know why I had to apologize? Because Mello was saying that the quotes misrepresented his position. But more importantly, he was saying, you have access to me. Why didn't you call me? The only reason I didn't text him was because he was in Rio, and I thought I couldn't reach him. He said, why would you think you couldn't reach me? That's what, that, of course you could reach me. So my point to you is that Barkley, love Barkley. He does have a job. But at the same time, in this position, you make decisions every day. People who I know, that's one of the reasons it's very, very difficult for me to say things about a lot of players. Like, it was very, very difficult for me to say something about Kobe. You know why? I better know what the hell I'm talking about because Kobe going to call me or Kobe going to text me. What the hell was that? Because he's giving you access to him where you don't have to give false information or incomplete information. Barkley has a relationship or had a relationship close enough with Michael Jordan where Michael Jordan should not have turned on the TV and found out what you were going to say before you called him. And in that regard, he's right. And that's why I agree with Kenny Smith. Barkley, I love Barkley. Barkley's good people and he's great at what he does. But at the same time, when you're sitting in that chair to be who Barkley is and as piercing as he can be, the guy that happens to be the greatest player that ever played, who you have access to that most people don't have, should not have found out what you and, felt yeah, on national right. television. So, so the, and, two, two things. I'm sorry, Max. Uh, really quick. Number one, you know how this business works. You just said it. These decisions are made on a spur of the moment basis. You not get that. Asked, you get asked a question. You respond to the question. Not, Sometimes not, not. you don't have time to call your buddy and find out. Yeah, but, how, but yeah, well, what yeah, information yeah, do I need but, to answer this question? But then, but then you have to sit up there and say, "Did speak to him? Got to talk to my man. Look, Here's look, what I'm I, thinking." I, I, look, you can look. speak differently about the, it. The Go point ahead. is here, I know it may sound to some who listened to Stephen A. just then, that you're almost giving that, or you are giving the subject of your criticism an opportunity to somehow change it. You know, if, if you wrote something critical, if there was an, a, 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 a story coming out in a publication, something critical about, about somebody, and they sent it to them first, you would think, well, are they going to get to proofread it? This is, but I, the way I feel about it, because I have relationships with people in the business that sometimes I have to criticize, is that if I call that person because we're close and I say look this is what I'm gonna say about you if I can say it to them even if it's highly critical then I can say it you know with a clear conscience that I'm actually just doing my job and and I'm not taking any unfair shots and maybe they can help kind of flesh out their point of view for me but there are and there are times where, when that person who I've spoken to said I okay I get it and there are other times where they didn't like it but I said it anyway but the, and, so, and, and, and so so it can actually also be a useful kind of tool for the person doing the criticism doing the criticizing ahead, it's well. not simply to smooth out feelings with the with the with the subject of and the, the criticism and, then, and the last point and this is another one you you hinted at is whether or not Barkley's wrong. Now, I have no problem apologizing when you're wrong. I've seen you do it. I have done it. I'm not impervious from being wrong, and I want to acknowledge it when I am. Sure. But to my knowledge, Barkley has not admitted at any point that he was wrong on this. To this day, he maintains that position, that at that yes. time, at that time, the Bobcats yes. and Jordan were bad. Yeah, but let's not act like everything is always about your job. 
There are things that you, me, Max, and everybody else go on the air every day that we could say that we don't choose to. Because guess what? You're professionals, you work with one another, but there's also a personal relationship. Tiger Woods and Michael Jordan are not speaking to Barkley. Barkley, I don't care what Barkley says, I'm telling you, it affects him. I know, and Barkley's, I know, I know. Barkley's a good man, he's a good brother, he's a great analyst, the whole bit. But you have to understand something. Barkley is a Hall of Famer. Barkley is a superstar basketball player before he ever got the job on TNT. Michael Jordan is not asking you not to criticize him. What he's saying is, don't treat me like I'm just anybody else you're talking about I because I'm courtesy. your boy. I'm that, not yeah. just anybody else. That. And that's a big, the thing big is, deal. There's two relationships to maintain. Right. It's this one. And then t the, the position wasn't oh, going to no, be compromised. I'm you, us right? with these people. Right. And we have to tell these people the truth, our truth, the way right. we believe on a right. daily basis. That's integrity. And then another thing, and I know you're not an advocate of this, lying to your friends, softening your criticism. Of course so, not. That's no, but, but, not a but, good but, thing but, to but, do. But, that has not integrity but wait between a minute. that wait, relationship. Wait a minute. I just said to you. I got you. Michael Jordan never said that. He doesn't care about that. He's got thick he's, skin. He's got thick skin. What he's saying is at the end of the day, if I'm your boy, Give me the call. Give me the courtesy of a phone call. And I'm saying to you that Barkley, look, Barkley wasn't wrong about a lot of things he has said, but there have been occasions where he may have been, but his heart's in the right place. He's just as real as it gets. Finally, and we all know about it's a sensitive time. I mean, you got players that are sensitive. That's not Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan can take it. But if you're his friend and you're in an inner circle, you can't treat him like he's just anybody else. However, he, Barkley is Barkley is maybe the most compelling guy on TV, partly because you get the sense that he says the kind of stuff that are going to have his friends, you know, stop talking to him. That's one of the reasons you like to watch well, listen, Barkley. Listen, listen, wait, 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 wait a minute. Filtered. I do that every day. But here's the difference. When a player... Usually, except with Mello, that's why I apologize. When a player hasn't heard from me, because I couldn't find him. If I know you, oh, you're going to get a text yep. from me or you're going to get a call from me. Because even though I'm a journalist by trade, Due to the relationship, I have an obligation. Like, yeah. I mean, a relationship, I got to reach out I to you let you know what's getting, coming. Both getting past this, though. Can't blindside you. Can't blindside you. Let's leave it there. Will, you are sticking around because we're going to talk about your cowboys a little bit, my oh, friend. Well, I got some truth to tell on that. Yeah, you do. Do you need to give anyone a call first, though? I don't think so. Is it time for America's team to go back to America's quarterback? We'll break it down next.